and pray for you and get ready to play. Just creating an atmosphere is all in this. But not performing for you, you're creating an atmosphere. And music is good. There's also a temptation in that music and that talent and that ability that I have. They say, look at me, look at how good we are. And they just use it and say, look, we're just, we're just like the butler, as we are. For the butler that comes to the door, as you're talking on. And the butler that shows you the way to keep changing. That's what the praise is all about. For the butler that leads you in to the peace chain. So are you not going to be in the Are you wanting to come in and peace chain? Are you wanting to come in and walk closer with me? It's crazy to think about it because we're just kind of like peasants in here, love. So I don't know anybody here as royalty as far as physical world is concerned. I don't know anybody who is. I know inside, we're children of the king. God wants his children. The king wants his children to be in this courtyard. And beyond the courtyard, he wants them to come in and even have a closer relationship. You see, there's that outer force set up in this, that courtyard you know, where it says one of the Gentiles are. And there's another place called this, this place where the really decisions are made, this holy place. Where the altar is at. But he even has made a way to the most holy place. He's made a way to the most holy place. We can come in and see that mercy seat that is above this heaven where the cherubim are. It says, word in the Old Testament, this was, this was where God's presence was. And in the Old Testament, those who would go in there, with the exception of that one time of year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, well, I didn't want that day, did you know that? I didn't plan on putting this in my message today, but well, I had a lot of fun that day, the Day of Atonement. And that day was the only day that the high priest was allowed in. Place. He would come in and he would offer a sacrifice to God for the nation. If he would go into this place any other time of year, he would not live. It didn't matter if he was the high priest or not. It didn't matter that he was a descendant of Abraham through biological means. It didn't matter. He was not abiding, he was not obeying, and he would be struck down. They dad and Abihu offered up unholy fire. They were children of Aaron, the high priest, the first high priest over Israel. They offered up unholy fire, and they were stricken down. And even Aaron was not allowed to mourn for his two sons. I want you to think about that. How serious the most holy place is. But now, it says, by faith we come. And now we've been given access to the most holy place. And that's where God wants you to be. You see, the covenant had blood sprinkled upon him. He was sprinkled upon his covenant, and he was sprinkled upon the people, and they had a covenant or an agreement. And there's blood sprinkled on that covenant now. There's blood sprinkled on that mercy seat, on the ark. There's blood sprinkled on the ark in heaven. You need to know it's the blood of Jesus that's on that ark, and it's eternal. And it doesn't have to be sacrificed from year to year. It doesn't have to be. It's about once and for all he entered in the most holy place. And once and for all is all we need. And we know today that by his blood, by his grace, we can come in the most holy place. And that's what he wants you. He doesn't want you outside the courts. He doesn't want you even just at the edge where the altars that he wants you to come in and be the most Where are you today? Are you walking with God? Are you in the most holy place right now? In your heart, in your mind? Are you as close as you can possibly be with God? Or is there something keeping you from God? Is there something keeping you from approaching God? In other words, is there something in your life? I'm going to give you one last example. And one last phrase in the play. And give you something to think about. Something to chew on. Moses was called out by God to be a deliverer of Israel. He was a type and shadow of him we're supposed to come, it says. Moses was called out and he saw that there was this bush that was on fire and it had consumed him. 
And he inquired of that bush, and he heard the voice of God speaking to him. Moses. And he told Moses to come. Moses was coming up there, and he told him to stop. He said, before you go any farther, you need to sing. For the ground in which you are standing is a holy. So Moses had a decision. Either you're going to listen to that voice in that bush burning, or not. And he was not going to be allowed to go any farther back to the mountain of God until he took off the sandals. Those sandals represent something in your life. Those sandals are something that God is asking you now, are you going to get rid of? Are you going to get out of your life? Are you going to take off? Are you going to give it to Him? Or if not, you can't approach Him. What is it? What is it? Is there anything in your life right now that's keeping you from having a closer walk with God? And if the answer is yes, it's time to say, God, I want you to help me get rid of this stuff. Help me get rid of this out of my life. I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to take the sandals off, Lord. I want to take the sandals off. I'm going to take them off, Lord. I'm going to give it to you. I'm asking for it. Anyone this morning desire this? You want this? Something inside is telling you that you want it. Are you willing to take this step?